Imagine that you have created an API to generate images from a text description. At first, everything was fine, but at some point, you noticed that some client was making a huge number of requests to your API, which caused your system to crash. You temporarily suspended this user's account and restored the system, but now you want to create a kind of a shield to prevent users from making so many requests. The proxy pattern will help you with this. The proxy is a structural design pattern that provides a placeholder for another object to control its access. It acts as an intermediary, allowing you to add additional behavior or control to the original object without modifying its code. Proxies are commonly used for various purposes, including controlling access, managing resources and delaying object creation. Suppose you have an interface for your API call. Let's call it Generate Image Interface and an implementation that receives the client's request and does the actual image generation. Let's call it Generate Image Impel. Now, let's create another implementation of Generate Image Interface and call it Generate Image Rate Limiter. This rate limiter accepts and stores an instance of the Impel class to redirect the call when the rate is not exceeded. Otherwise, when the rate is exceeded, this class becomes a lightweight shield that will prevent the heavy work from starting and will immediately return an error to the client asking to repeat the same request after a delay. In practice, you don't need to create a unique rate limiting proxy for each specific class. There is a general solution that can also be in a different network layer, so your server will not be overloaded due to requests that should be rejected immediately. There are three actors in this design pattern. The first, subject, is a generic interface that defines both methods, the real subject and the proxy implement. This allows you to use a proxy instead of a real object. Real subject is a class that represents the real object or service that the proxy controls access to. And of course, proxy, a class that implements the same interface as the subject. It contains a reference to the real subject and controls access to it, adding any necessary functionality. In terms of benefits, the proxy pattern enhances access control by enabling you to manage the permissions and access to the real subject, adding an extra layer of security or authorization. This can be particularly crucial in scenarios where sensitive information or operations are involved. Additionally, it aids in efficient resource management as proxies have the ability to handle resources related to the real subject. This contains lazy initialization, caching, and releasing resources when they are no longer necessary, contributing to a more optimized use of system resources. Furthermore, proxy can optimize the performance of the system. For example, it can postpone the creation or execution of resource-heavy objects or tasks, or reuse just calculated results. Lastly, the client code becomes simpler and more straightforward when using the proxy pattern. The complexity of functionalities or interactions is encapsulated within the proxy, making it easier for the client code to interact with the real subject. On the other hand, there are some disadvantages to consider. The introduction of the proxy pattern can lead to increased complexity in the system. This is particularly evident when managing various types of proxies and understanding their interactions, which can become a challenging task. Moreover, as proxies add an extra layer of indirection, there is a potential for a slight performance overhead, though this is typically outweighed by the performance benefits in most scenarios. That's all about proxy design pattern. See you in the next video.